actually was. I think Baltimore is going to win kind of going away. Mm -hmm. Part of this is for me is that Josh Allen against what has been a very good Kansas City defense this past week ran for 12 times, 72 yards, two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. Lamar is a better runner than Josh Allen is. He is more gifted. He is, he is more gifted. He is much shiftier. If you are Kansas City and you don't have more than one dependable receiver and you're playing this Baltimore defense, you are done. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Guys on Sports. It's me, Rocky, Mr. King, the champion of Rocky's League. No, me, the champion of my... He is the champion, right? No, Justin. No, well, Has Justin look, been crowned, though? I mean, I've won three of the last five, so kind of it's a bit nah. of a dynasty going on. Yeah, and no, I won it, my... Dynasties don't skip years. The other league you're in, I won that they one, do. so... It's ask, kind ask of the like uh, the 90s. They skip some years. But anyway, how you guys doing? I mean, it's a pretty interesting divisional round over yeah. the weekend. I know I was excited. Not as excited as the week before, but I was excited. How how'd you guys enjoy it? I'm gonna let you go. Yeah, well, uh, you know, I think we had some good games in there. Uh look, right now, I mean we'll get to it, but the Ravens look kind of unbeatable. Um the other three games I thought were all good. Unfortunately, my Bucks were on the losing end in Detroit. Uh, put up a much better fight than I think a lot of people were expecting. And, I mean, let's be honest. The Bucks were expected to win, like, four to five games this season, and mm -hmm. instead they made it to the second round of the playoffs and only lost by a touchdown to, to Detroit, who is a legitimately good team. Um, I think we'll, we'll, we'll get into previews in a minute, but, uh, yeah, yeah. but th there's some surprises that I think uh, will be coming up this week. That's pretty cool. What about you, Rocky? How would you enjoy it? So, you know, I got to be honest with you. I agree with you about the Ravens. I think that they seem to be, right, the class right now of the yeah. league. Um, 49ers continue to underwhelm with the amount of talent they yeah. have on that field. That defensive line that they are paying a ton of money to did mm -hmm. not show up against Green Bay. Um, I thought, personally, that the Chiefs and Bills game was the messiest, least professional-looking game i've watched in a long uh, time it, it was, was fun at, though at it was points, fun, very like, fun i think we had a really good battle between josh allen and patrick mahomes in the third quarter kind of sticking into the fourth quarter and then it got a little messy you saw josh allen try to force the ball down the field a lot try to play hero ball and completely completely ignore underneath guys who could easily get you a first down yeah. keep your drive moving i well, didn't understand I, what he I was doing with that yeah i agree with that i mean but you did have some key drops there it was a big one by Diggs. i i feel like you got to make that catch hey. uh, for what you're getting paid and who you are in this league 100 percent. let me tell you a real quick story i'm watching it with my wife she doesn't watch a ton of football mm -hmm. she at the end of the game said i feel bad for that kicker it's <laughs> not the kicker's fault that receiver needed to catch that pass. That's and true. And I agree. But deep ball, perfectly uh, done. I mean, the kicker's job is also to make the Also kick. to kick it's, the ball. So yeah. I don't think it's just his fault, though. There's a lot of blame to he go around. A, yeah, you can't just blame. blame one person. Yeah. But Dicks. also make the... But if we were, Dicks. <laughs> make the kick. So, <laughs> I mean, Dicks had, like, what? He had two drops, at least. In that game. He had a couple. Um, I, I do agree that was, uh, you know, it was weird that uh, Allen kept trying to throw it for everything when he had clear underneath yeah. guys couldn't figure that one out right yeah we're gonna get there right but i think you do have a tiktok take for us this week I, before I we do. get into that right I do. And, and this has to do with our big bust clip okay and we talked a lot <laughs> about who is the biggest fantasy bust mm. and i think we all like looking and reading the comments i think we all time to check my social media yeah. to see who me online. Missed. I'm the biggest bust. I never miss. And uh, well, and so we're gonna thank three listeners: GP Phil, uh, sorry, GQ Phil, sorry, mm -hmm. um, Stephen Thames 840, and Caleb, uh, who all mentioned that we whiffed on Austin Eckler. He was drafted almost universally as a number two running back and finished as a number 26. Yeah. Um, I whiffed the most because I actually mentioned K-9 before I mentioned 
Eckler and looking yeah. back, that was a miss. But I mean, saying Eckler was the biggest bust is like ranking Kelsey as your top tight end every year. It kind of like, it, I mean, we're just wasting breath by saying, I wanted to kind of dig in and find those nugget busts. Right. Those busts you didn't know you had. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and really bring them to the forefront rather than the, uh, you know, obvious bust. Right? Right. No, uh, uh, I, I'm not going to go into the anyone who I was going to go with there. But uh, I think Eckler, I mean, he is an obvious guy because he was touchdown dependent this season. If he wasn't scoring a touchdown, you weren't seeing any points from him. Yeah. And the Chargers offense under Kellen Moore, who was supposed to be really good, um, mm. couldn't get it done on multiple mm. occasions this season. They were very hurt, though. Yeah. I well, mean, I get and that. That's, and but, that's my question is people were giving J.J. They were calling out Mark for mentioning Justin Jefferson, saying he was not a bust. He was hurt. That's a bust, though. A, well, fantasy bust for sure. Right? Yeah. That was my question because Eckler, when he came back, he looked old all of a sudden. Yeah, now, maybe, did. maybe there's a lingering injury we didn't know about it. Maybe we'll find out in the off season. And what sucks about it is it's such a edge job he was doing leading into the season, talking. You know, oh, he's, he's very yeah. aware of his fantasy yeah. stock, yeah. talking to fantasy owners when he's going to be back, and then he comes back and draft uh, Joshua Kelly and, and bring him onto their them yeah. onto the, uh, their teams. <laughs> Then he comes back and he busts. Yeah, I, so. and here's the thing: he's heading into free agency. We don't know where he's going to end up. You know, he could he could end up as a second back somewhere else. Um, I think at this point in his career, from what I saw this season, he is best viewed as a running back one B as his his ceiling right now. Yeah. I think you um, give that. We we talked about him, Don. I think we talked about him maybe being a value depending on your league. Like if you right. have a league with guys that are kind of you know just casual, yeah, just they'll know the name. name. You probably want to stay away. But if you're in a league with guys that are like, let's be honest with some of the leagues we play in where guys are overthinking things. He may drop and he may be valuable because guys are going to want to stay away for that reason. Yeah. I, I will say this. I don't think we're in many of those leagues where we have casuals, although there's a couple guys in your league. Yeah, but they're great. <laughs> they're great guys. <laughs> they're like they taco. You know, it's so like much they to add the flavor to the league. It's great. But, but I could see them pulling Eckler 1-1. One, one oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, you yeah, can see that. All right, so uh, without further ado, uh, we're going to do what we did last week. I do want to remind you guys, and especially Rocky, because you weren't here last week, as we recap the divisional round games, you know, we could weave in some of our thoughts about some of these guys and implications far, as far as fantasy. I think there's a lot of stuff that you kind of pick and choose from as we go through. Like, I know I want to talk about um, Isaiah Likely with the Ravens and the Andrews and all that stuff that we touched on in the preseason. But I think we start um, we start with the Texans and uh, C.J. Stroud traveling to Baltimore. Um, I think this is one of those things, if you were betting on this game, uh, you know, it was one of those situations where you just, you know, don't get cute, you know. You I think gotta, this was the easiest yeah. bet of the week. Uh, yeah. I believe Baltimore was neg- uh, was uh, minus 10 yeah. uh, heading into this game. And uh, if you took them at the half, you were just kind of like, what the hell is happening? Mm-hmm. Um, but then Lamar just showed that he is the MVP of the league this season, took over the second half, and that game was never close. The Texans' offense couldn't produce anything because that Ravens' defense, that front seven – is the best front seven in the NFL. On the back end, you have a safety like Kyle Hamilton who's going to disrupt plays in the secondary. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing defense, and it's a super underappreciated offense. I think people are starting to appreciate them more um, as we're seeing them in the playoffs. Uh, But this team, I mean, if I had to pick a team right now to win the Super Bowl, I'm taking the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, before you go, I know Marlon Humphreys didn't actually play either, right? He was out? Correct. He was out. Yeah, so I think with with this game in particular, I came into the week just not feeling great about it because the defense, obviously, they played him week one, and, you know, that was Stroud's first start. So, you know, you take it with a grain of salt. But throughout the rest of the season, they're the only team that held the Texans out of the end zone. And then you add on top of that, they're pretty banged up at wide receiver. They're missing guys. I just didn't see how they are going to go uh, on the road and win that game. But I do think, well, you know what? Let me pitch it to you. I do want to say, though, the Texans were awful just a year ago. They were the second worst team. They had Lovey Smith, who basically 
cheated them out of the first <laughs> overall pick by winning a game at the end of the season. Um, he gets let go. Well, they, he helped them. Yeah, I mean, he. Well, well we're going to get to that. <laughs> uh, he ended up uh, being let go. They bring in D'Amico Ryans, which I think is maybe the best head yeah. coaching hire of this past offseason. Yeah, very um, inspired choice. And, and they took the quarterback, who I thought should have gone number one overall heading mm-hmm. into last offseason, and that's C.J. Stroud. And he has absolutely shown that he can be an elite quarterback in this league. And that, if you have that elite quarterback, you can win Super Bowls. Well, or even, even above average quarterback, even a good quarterback like Baker Mayfield. Even in this game, <laughs> CJ, it wasn't one of his best games, but he didn't yeah. he didn't kill him. Like the receivers were legitimately right. covered. He he was trying I mean, he was picking and choosing the right person to throw to. They just were extremely covered. For my money, Baltimore made one of the wisest signings. And that is signing Clowney last offseason, getting him at the value they got him at. And yeah, he has that's true. really solidified that line. He He's, fits in too. He doesn't have to be the number one. He can be the number three. It doesn't really matter. Well, it's not even that. They're, typically, their system in Baltimore doesn't favor right. pa- edge rushers. Right. It's more of a blitz package. They they, they play a hard nosed game, but I mean we I seen it in New York with Martindale who came from Baltimore. It kinda hampers the edge rusher. So it actually is perfect for him because he's not really a pass rusher. He's a no he's solid a run stopper, run stopper yeah, hold yeah. hold the edge yeah, kind of guy. He, he I do gets wanna, to do what he does the best. I do want to get back to Texans for just a second. Mm-hmm. They they have this all these foundational pieces. You talk about Nico Collins, Tank Dell, you have two great guys at wide receiver. I think they're gonna bring back Dalton Schultz. What do you really think about John Mechie? John Mechie really started to come on towards the end of the season. I um, agree with you. He uh, was real high in him the year before. Yeah, but the issue was he had uh, – it was a form of cancer that actually kept him out the entire 2022 season. Yeah. Comes back, is able to play this season. They have a lot of good foundational pieces. They also have $74 million in cap this offseason. Yeah. So they're well, going to be able to do a lot of things. Another, and they have two number one picks. And they, have, they don't have theirs. Theirs was traded to the uh, Cardinals to help get Will Anderson okay. last season, uh, so they have which Browns. everybody lambasted them for because they're saying, you're giving up a great pick to get Will Anderson this yeah. year and it turns out they kept the better pick which was the Cleveland Browns pick yeah. so they still have one number one it's not their own it's the Cleveland Browns so got the let, me, deal. let me ask you two questions yeah Fan, this is fantasy related so make it quick so we can't clip it um but for the Texans rank those three wide receivers in order I mean I obviously Mechie falls at the back but the other two as where you would be drafting them next I think, year. I think for me it's Tank Dell, Nico Collins, John Mechie, because when those three were all together, Dell was the number one guy. Yeah. Once Dell got hurt, Collins took over and became number one. Six. I think Dell is the better fantasy receiver. And we could be proven wrong, but that's what I'm taking for right no, now. No, I mean, I, I think on paper you're proven right. 100% I agree with you. Tank Dell was clearly outperforming Nico prior to the injury. The thing I can't get past is the, the height, the speed – of Nico. Like You're the, so vain, you know? Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm all about it. Um, so what I'm wondering is... What are you wondering? With Tank gone... This is supposed to be quick, remember? And Yeah. And Nico <laughs> as the clear number one because of yeah. injury, did he show the Texans what he could become? It, yeah. Is he like another DK Metcalf, possibly? The clear uh, number one. I hear you saying. He so, has that potential. He has DK Metcalf potential, but I don't know if he can do it sustained he has over frame. an entire season. Yeah. We'll see. I think Tank Dell has shown he can do it as uh, long no, as he's Tank, playing it healthy. Tank looked fantastic. Yeah, I would say, just like you, Dell, uh, Collins, then Mechie. But I will say, I think Nico, I mean, Collins and Dell are a little bit closer than oh, it I seemed agree. like you thought. I went back and looked because I had this argument with Josh a couple of days ago. And the games they played together, they were literally they were like within a target of each other. Each of those games. Now Dell had a couple of huge games in that mix, um, so I want to see long term if that's like a thing that continues to happen where he's, you know, hitting the sixty yard bomb. Because I think without that, if it's not as consistent as it was this year, they're a lot. I mean, then I think you can make that argument for Collins, who's probably going to be more of a red zone target going into the future. Can I go ahead and lock in the Houston Texans to win the AFC South in 2024? Can I go ahead and lock that in right now? Uh, I want to... Yeah, I mean, I just don't know, man. Stuff changes. Is Will Levis come out next year? It look incredible. Titans are not winning it. The Colts, I'm not sure what's going on there. Ah, the I don't Jags, know. The Jags, are, we're doing this, and now they're kind of, eh, eh. So it's like the, the, the end of a roller coaster. And uh, well, the stampede. Texans are just going up. All right, another fantasy question for this stampede game. Is stampede. stampede is Stampede. You're right. He's been widely mediocre so far. Yeah. Um, Lamar Stroud, who do you take first? For next year? Next year. I'm taking Lamar. 
You're taking Lamar still. Yeah, yeah. I, I think long, uh, I mean, for next year, it's it's Lamar. I think Stroud still has a lot of upside. And if we're talking about five years, it's probably mm. Stroud at that point. Okay. But I, for 2024, is Lamar. I think you just directed me to a better question. Yeah, is who do you target? In Dynasty? No, in either redraft or redraft what I'm saying based on value. Where do you, who do you uh, okay. target? So that changes a little bit because yeah. Lamar will it's probably better be question. at worst the second quarterback taken. Yeah. I think people still love Mahomes. They still think he's great. And I, the still Chiefs, t- I take Josh Allen. He's, Chiefs, he's been number uh, one last Allen three too, years. But uh, Josh Allen as well. So there's maybe third at worst. Yeah. Um, and especially if the Chiefs add a receiver, they're looking to do this offseason. Yeah. Uh, so I'm taking uh, CJ Stroud in that case later. Yeah. But it depends on what happens going into the next season. It's because true. a lot of people may overvalue Stroud because of mm-hmm. how well he played you know, going down the stretch. Um, but today you're probably... Today I'm probably taking Stroud. Yeah. I mean, for me, I think it it's more about Baltimore, who seem to have issues surrounding Lamar with the best receivers. Yeah. yeah. And, and so he's going to be ridiculous. running all They're the pretty time. good this year, though. No, they're good. <laughs> Listen, Flowers is, is good. He's developing. I think Flowers is going to be good. OBJ is OBJ. OBJ has been good, too. Bateman hasn't performed. He's been off. Like, okay, like yeah. We thought and likely is, you know, coming up. No, what do we think but, about that Andrews call? Huh? I think it's going to happen. They might have Andrews this week. Yeah, yeah. that would be crazy. Yeah, I just think that Lamar is going to probably still be that running quarterback that Stroud is never going to be. So he's going to get points. That's ways. fair. That's, That's fair. true. All right, moving on. Uh, let's go to the NFC and we'll talk about your. Your Bucks, who I was actually pulling for because Thank you. as much as the Lions are on the dog story, I do like Mayfield. I, even Thank though I don't he can Mayfield. be a, a prick you. sometimes. <laughs> no, I like Rocky Mayfield. Hate Baker Mayfield. Rocky would love to go have a drink with him, um, as Rocky has said multiple times over <laughs> the last six years. So he's just uh, being fair with his uh, his analysis. Yeah. But no, I, I look. Here's the thing: is that is that uh, especially when it comes to picking up pressure, the Bucks made a few mistakes um, that really took them out of drives. Um, and then Baker made one. Really, he made one bad pass the entire game, and it was his last pass of the season. And I will say back to what you were saying earlier, they did play a great game. And I think, as as much as I hate to say it, because I've been banging the table for Mike Evans all year, he had some pretty big drops this game. He also had some major catches he that really did, put but, them back in the game. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. like I said, I love the guy, but there were a few of them that, man, you really wish. He could have held on specifically that one. I think it was down the left sideline where it was just on, like, the top half of his hands, hitting his fingers, hoping he could lay out because I think, man, they had the momentum there, and I thought the Lions were on their heels a little bit in that second half, and they were just able to hold on. There were some defensive calls in the second half that I think really hurt the Bucks because they just kind of left guys almost wide open. Um, Ryan Neal, safety for the Bucks. Uh, I hope he never plays for the Bucks again. Um, Who is it that Rock, got hurt? Uh, that got hurt. That was, was um, uh, Carlton Davis, okay. cornerback. Yeah, I think you know in the Lions Bucks games or Bucks game, I didn't root against either. I liked them both. I liked both stories. To be honest with yeah, you, yeah, me too. I really liked the Lions and their story. I, I love their coach. In the other games, I had like a clear a team I wanted. Yeah, to. I wanted yeah. the Texans to beat the Ravens. I did. I knew it wasn't probably likely. I wanted the 49ers to beat Green Bay. I was rooting for them to come back and win that game. Um, and I was rooting for the Chiefs. We're going. I found myself rooting for the Chiefs. Yeah, yeah. no. So games like hmm. the Detroit Bucks game. It was. I, I, I go into those way. games. Even keel, I kind of let my heart take me where it goes. Yeah. Like I think after two drives, you kind of know which way you're leaning because just the way you react to you know somebody having a punt or whatever it is. But I mean, it was an entertaining game, and I think, I think for you guys, I, I, I mean, do you, I think you guys have to probably re up now. You have to bring Evans back. I think you probably bring Mayfield back. Well, they seem to want to be back together. Yeah, there's three targets that are going to free agency that we really want to bring back, and those are um, Baker Lenny. Mayfield. Sorry, who? Fat Lenny. Uh, Fat Lenny, no. Uh, Baker Mayfield, Mike Evans, and then Antoine Winfield, who I will say is one of the best safeties. I like Antoine Winfield, too. So so those three are the keys. Levante David may or may not retire. If he doesn't, then he would be nice to be able to bring back. Rashad White Um, looked good, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, but guys like Devin White, I think Devin White really lost his job towards the end of the season. Former fifth overall pick. Um, He's most likely gone. Yeah. Um, KJ sense. Britt, who was a special teams guy, really stepped up and played better than Devin White did this entire season. 
So he can fit into that role that Devin White has. It's nice, and he doesn't make Devin White money, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I mean, I think when you're building a team that you're hoping to get better and compete more, you're looking for those players. You know, you're looking for on the Browns, we have uh, Dewan uh, Jones. That was a fifth round pick, but he made rookie um, offensive line. What is? Year. Let me do. You, what is um, Godwin's contract situation Godwin right has now? One year left. It's mm-hmm. twenty seven million. It's interesting. So what they can do is they can sign him to an extension to kind of alleviate some of that money. Yeah. Um, I would look, probably looking at two to three year extension. Yeah. Um, and restructure the contract. Price yeah, kick it down the road. Seven million. So that, that's twenty million right there. That's I think probably they what Mike Evans they is have to do that, right? I mean, I think there's a Mike, couple. There's a couple of options there. So not only him. Uh, Vita Vea as well. Vita Vea is commanding twenty million next year, so oh. you can probably restructure his guys like Russell Gage um, and Carlton Davis and Shaq Barrett. Those are three guys who may not be with the team next year because yeah. they are going to be making a ton of money. Um, so if you were to get rid of all three of those guys, it's another fifty million right there. Anyway, you see them trading Godwin? I don't think so. I think the only way that they trade Godwin is if something happens where Baker says no, Mike Evans says no, Antoine Winfield says no, and all these guys basically are sort of asking for trades, and they're like, hey, we have to just tear it down and rebuild, which I did, was a possibility before the season. Yeah. But after the way they played this year, is not a possibility. Well, before. and then if you look at the division, the vi- I feel like it's oh, still yeah. going to be it's up wide, for grabs. It's wide open. Yeah. Awful. yeah. I will say one of your... One of my favorite players last year was Kate Otten. I felt like yeah, he, he continues really came to develop. Yep. I, I like his skill set. I, I you know I think he's he's intriguing because you don't expect it, and then he ends up always being in the right spot. He right. kind of reminds me a little bit of poor man's Kelsey, but he yeah. does know how to run a route. Yeah. So I, I no. liked him a lot. All right, moving on to the other NFC game. Um, Can we talk about the Lions for a second? Do you want to talk about the Lions? We did talk about the Lions. Jared freaking Goff. Is he good for a, good, for, good for golf. Yeah, good I for always, golf. but I always feel like that about Corey. You know, he's one of those guys that I always said nothing special about Jared Goff, but he's a guy you can win with. But Jared Goff is a guy who doesn't turn the ball over once he learns how to play, and he's, he's really fit into Ben Johnson. That's system what's special about very golf. well. That's what's special. And about he golf. he can lead this team. That's not Great. fair. He's not. He is not a Patrick Mahomes who's going to make like you know a ridiculous play. A Josh Allen who's going to make a ridiculous yeah. play. But he's going to put you repeatedly in a position to win the game. Yeah, but he's had years in between the Super Bowl year where he turned the ball over and yeah, didn't no, especially push the ball down the field. Point. He's so, learned. He's so, learned over right. his career. Right. So, and also, when McVay started talking about bringing another quarterback, and this is documented through interviews with yeah. multiple people, um, Goff really took it personally as a hit to his confidence. And then yeah. he's traded to the Lions for Stafford. But the Rams had to give up three first round picks along with Goff. In order to get Stafford, yeah. it's like here, take him, and yeah. we'll give you three first round this picks. This guy is a raging piece of shit. And so the yeah. first yeah. season in Detroit, yeah, the uh, three games said, they won or something. They won, I think it was three or four. Yeah. Their first win wasn't until I believe the first week in December. Yeah, um, really bad team that year against the Vikings. And Jared Goff has said that first win kind of started to bring his confidence back. Yeah. Uh, guys like Dan Campbell being there in his quarter started to bring his confidence back. So hey, we went into more, last season. Wish more coaches said, hey, would do that. We can actually yeah. go and win this. Um, and then they finished, I believe, 8-9 and nine or 9-8 nine, in 2022. And then this year they came out and they just destroyed from the word go. Yeah. 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 Um, having a guy like Jared Goff with confidence is a very effective weapon to have on your offense. You got to know how to coach they, these guys. You have to have patience. Have they yeah. been the most consistent team in the NFC? We had the Eagles who started hot and sucked at the end. Yeah. 49ers were up and down. It seemed like the Lions, to me, were the most consistent. And they, had, I agree with that. they had two bad losses during the year, but they that did. was about it. And they, one of those was to the Ravens. We may yeah. see that matchup again. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Uh, so, Packers, Niners. I'll start this off by just saying one of the worst interceptions I've seen thrown ever. That's at the end of the game. And so he owned it. He owned it because he said. It was really yeah, bad. Throw it out of bounds. Yeah. There was nothing there. I mean, but overall, the game, I do think the Niners were a little bit unimpressive. Um, I don't expect them to look like that this week. But, yes, they, they underwhelmed a little bit. And I wasn't surprised by the Packers because they just seemed like they had that uh, – it, it's, that it's, juju going, you it's, know. It's sports malpractice <laughs> that a franchise like the Packers gets a quarterback like Brett Favre, and then they get the quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. And now we're seeing Jordan Love show that he can actually play the position very well. But it's not fair. It's like Mike. It's like the Steelers having three coaches since the Super Bowl era. Like it's this stupid, and I, I think this needs to be investigated by somebody because I don't like it. As mad as people are about it, especially people in that division. I think you got to give them a hand because in each case, they traded for Brett Favre. Yeah, I get it. 
they went and got Rodgers, who fell in that draft, yeah. and yep. sat him on the bench for four years. Like, Three. that took balls to do. Yeah. Teams were, like, right around that time starting to stop doing that. Yeah. It's an oxymoron yeah. a little bit. And then, you know, even Jordan Love, they did the same thing. I mean, yeah. they had the conviction. No, I, I get and, it. I get it. And I, I'm giving them credit. Some it's just, more people really, should follow in those it's footsteps. It's really annoying. Yeah. I see. think, you know, what was interesting to me about the Green Bay Packers is – if you watched, um, I don't, you know, I think the exercise that you played with the receivers about the Texans, mm-hmm. let's play that with the Packers. Yeah. Yeah. That's, tough. In, That's really yeah, tough. Because in every, every month, they were led by a different receiver every mm-hmm. month of the year. And there were months where I was like, man, my pick of Romeo Dobbs, me telling people to, yeah. that was brilliant. And then at the end, he kind of was good. You had Chris, uh, Christian Watson. You had uh, Reed, right? Reed, Jada Reed. Reed. Yeah. So, I mean, how do you rank these I mean, guys? Dontavian Wicks came on yeah. towards the season. So. Yeah, yeah, I think he led one month. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you want to go first? And they have a good pair of, uh, not well, not rookies anymore, uh, tight ends as well, and Musgrave. Musgrave, Craft, yeah. So, yeah. It, it's a, a lot of weapons there, and Aaron Jones is the veteran guy who's going to help lead the, you know. Aaron the, Jones, the when guys. healthy, is still... A scary back yeah, to if anybody was able uh, if you're a Dallas Cowboys fan out there can you just let us know how he did in that game in the yeah. first round just uh, send us a quick message let us know because I yeah. think I forgot yeah <laughs> all right so you want to rank them quick or you want to do it at the end we can I rank think them this at the is end. much tougher to rank it is uh, the the Texans it was very <laughs> obvious to me it was it was Dell Collins Mechie. but these four guys when you take Wicks when you take Dodge when you take Watson and you, when you take who am I forgetting Reed, yeah. those four, like, it depends on the game script. That's it right. can go any – you could have Reed be number one one week, number four the next week, and it can go anywhere. There is – this is a group that I uh, – Do you almost until, stay away from yes, them? Yes, until I have a better clarity on who is leading this group. I don't know if I want to draft any of these guys early on. So how about in Dynasty? So for, I'll, I'll answer. In Dynasty, for me, if yeah. I'm playing the long game, I'm probably going Reed first. Okay. I think I go Watson second. Dobbs third and uh, what's Wicks fourth. Yeah. I just like Reed's explosiveness. I like that they try to get him the ball in like uh, un- unorthodox ways, similar to what they do with Debo uh, in San Francisco. And to me, he looks the most like a playmaker out of the bunch. I, I'm going to go, uh, I'll, I'll piggyback a little bit because we're close, but I would go Reed, Dobbs, Watson, and Wicks. And the reason is Watson has a route. He has a route that he runs really good, and that's, and, and that's it. Yeah. And so if, 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 if you're fighting with a, a, a subpar quarterback or maybe a safety that doesn't play mm-hmm. disciplined, Watson's going to be the pick. And that's exactly why my ranking is Dobbs, Reed, <laughs> Wicks, mm-hmm. Watson. Oh, because okay. if you don't have him running that one route yeah. specifically, then Watson is not – going to be able to to beat you underneath to do these kind of like, but, oh, I didn't expect that from him. He doesn't have that capability. Dobbs can do a lot of different things. He can run Do- the complete route tree. Dobbs um, is an Anquan Bolin to me. To yeah, me. yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he, he is the, the modern day. He runs great routes. Uh, tough guy, bigger than you think. Yeah. Catches almost everything. Maybe this year he struggled a little bit. But but if I'm buying stock in that, well, that receiving core, I, I think, well, did you have Reed first or you had him yeah, second? Dobbs. I had Dobbs, Dobbs. Then Reed. So yeah. I would take, I feel like those three guys, they're in a bubble together, and I like Reed out of the bunch. I don't think any of them do what Watson does, and that's the guy I want that does that. The I big think play Reed guy. Is the most gadgety. I do agree with that. He's got that Debo where you can run him on a jet sweep, you can throw him. No, I'm talking about Watson, though. I'm saying Watson is the one to me that's the outlier. He's the one with the oh, one okay, route. Okay, I see what you're saying. But he's the one that. He's that facet of the game for that team. He's Marquise Goodwin, but he's better. Yeah, no, that's a great way to put it. I mean, he's, he's got that world-class speed, but that's it. Like, who becomes the focal point of the offense? I think it's one of those three other guys and your field stretcher, not all three of those guys in the field, if yes. you get what I'm saying. Right, but, I, again, I'm going to go back to what I said a few minutes ago. Those, those three, and then you have Watson. I mean, really, all four of them. Any day of the week, any game. That's fair. Yeah. Any one of them could be the focal point in the attack. Yeah, and were this this yeah. year. Yeah. You know, and that was a because tr- I loved. Uh, I, I got Romeo in the sixth round in our right. D-Gen league. I knew it was a steal, but a lot of games I was like, "Do I start him this week or yeah. not?" Like I, you know, I didn't yeah. ever have. Co- I did. I had to start him most games, but I was I, starting to read towards the end of the season. Yeah. 
And it was easier at the end of the season because he kind of defined himself. Um, Quick big so, note that, that came up today. About San Fran uh, here? About or is San Fran. It? Okay. Debo Samuel is unlikely to play oh, on Sunday. Oh, my gosh. This, this changes things, maybe. Yeah. He is unlikely to play. Mm. Now, we've seen players be unlikely to play on a Tuesday and then able to play by yeah. Sunday. Yeah. But as of right now, he's unlikely to play. So who they have Ayuk, but then was it Juwan Johnson? But Juwan Johnson. I mean, you still have George Kelly. You still have Christian McCaffrey. Is there anybody that fills of, that role? I mean, Kittle was, to me, underwhelming in this last game. I, like, I, I just felt like... He had a 50-yard bomb. He, he did, but then there were two other routes that he, he missed. Uh, well, there was one that he ran the incorrect route, which almost led to an interception, but wasn't. He missed two blocks. I just, yeah, he had a bomb, but he's a receiver. You would expect that he actually catches balls. <laughs> he seemed like he missed his other assignments. So I don't know. I don't know. All right, so what fantasy can we pull from here? I'm trying to think of a good little question for these two teams. I mean, I think... You're talking about the did, Niners specifically? Yeah, the Niners. I so mean, the I, offense I have, runs through Debo. I think when Debo's not on the field, they are a different team. I mean, my question is, is simply this. Uh, is Christian McCaffrey going to be the number one running back again next year? That's what I was thinking, too. Like, do we put our money on that again? So Until I, he shows signs of slowing down, I'm going to continue to do so. I feel but, like you do. But are there other people in the conversation? Because I have three that I would look at and say, maybe. I have a couple, but I don't think right now they're taking over from McCaffrey. Man, you know Two who's a guy now, I maybe. love next year? that I, I love this year. Love you more. I'd love James Cook next year. I think that he's just going to. There's only one thing I don't love about man, James Cook. Uh, what, his skin color. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Yeah, I'm sorry. No, he he's undersized. You don't you like your big size? Your size queen, huh? <laughs> I I like uh, I think the irony. I think a healthy breeze with an competent running back or sorry quarterback quarterback yeah, yeah. excites me, and I think Jamar Gibbs, who you drafted in our league, Jamir, Jamir, Jamar, right. Jamar is fine. Jamal, here, 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 it's Jamal. Yeah, here, 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 here. I. I like him. I Look, think he's going to continue to develop. I, will, I like the Detroit Lions. I said he's got to put 10, 12 pounds of muscle on in the We're going to go over all these positions in a little bit, right? I think so. Okay. Maybe if we have time. Maybe, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because there's a guy, I think, so, let, yeah, so let's move about. on. Let's move I on. All right. I, he's on my, I think he's on. Last game here. I didn't write any notes. Chiefs Bills. <laughs> I was rooting against the Bills. I felt bad. Why? I don't know why. I can't describe why. Because I normally hate Mahomes, and I thought that he was an absolute whining piece of trash this well, year. Let's be honest. We know this about you. I've known this about you for a while. You mm -hmm. are a pretty big Swifty. So, you <laughs> know, you're going to root. Why would you want to not see her in the AFC Championship game? I there can it see is. that. I can see Ro Rocky. So, yeah. Yeah. Concert with a little beanie on, oh, you know? Yeah. Yeah, a little cardigan. I'd wear it. I'd have to borrow action. one off Zach or two because, you know, Zach likes a double cardigan. He likes to crochet. Extra safe. Um, yeah, I can see that. But, yeah, I was definitely actively rooting for the Bills. Well, you um, picked the Bills as your Super I had Bowl them team. as my Super Bowl team. Yeah. I think, And a little future here, I don't know how you don't take Mahomes getting three and a half points. The Ravens are great, but he, we'll talk about that in a minute. I know. I just it's it's pretty crazy that he's a three and a half point. Two and a half makes sense to me. Three and a half is kind of crazy. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I had the Bills winning the whole thing. I think they should have won that game. Missed opportunities, missed field goal. The, there, the, the they should have won punts, that game. Uh, worst, in the fourth might quarter. be the worst call of this playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> look, I did not understand ended that. Ended up not completely kicking them in the ass because did, uh, no because Nicole Hartman ended up fumbling he the fumbled ball out of the back yeah, of the end zone. But, yeah. but you're you're that close to going down by I believe it was ten at that point. But did um, you and kind of putting yourself out of the game. Yeah, but it also burned probably like four or five minutes off the clock and flip field position. So but I mean, only, but I mean it was only two guys, and a half minute drive because they didn't have to go that far. But still it, it is time that's burned. Well, the Hartman <laughs> fumble, I'll be honest with you. It was not called a fumble on the field. It was a fumble, though. It was a fumble. I've seen it I, as I soon as it, it was happened. too close no. for them to overturn the call on the field. Mm -hmm. that, well, that's what they have replay for. Yeah. But the replay, I don't think I saw a clear I did. that it was on. I, I think it was iffy of whether his, his knee touched first. When's the last time you saw it on a Tom Trist? Uh, well, I mean, I just actually just saw. To be fair, when I seen oh, after it, the game, that's when I seen it live. I thought it was a fumble, and then when I seen the replay, it confirmed it for me. Yeah, 
I mean, right, when it's bang, when it is bang bang like that, see, the ball wasn't out, but the ball was moving before his knee hit the ground, and they considered that loss of possession. I think that was when I fully turned and started rooting for the kicker of Buffalo to miss the field goal because wow. I was like, "That's a shit call. It's too close. I don't like." He it. Fu- he's got to hold on to the ball, Rocky. He does have to hold on to the ball. And you know what else? Out? Listen, Andy Reid, because it was close. Don't get cute. Like you were. Dr- I mean. They were yeah, moving I don't that understand ball. that. What the Give heck? it to Pacheco. Don't get cute. Stupid. Pacheco. By the way, I needed is there a harder multi touchdown score. Pacheco. I needed that. <laughs> I had already had one. I needed that second touchdown right is there. there I'm a thinking guy that runs, they're giving it to Pacheco. Is there a guy that runs like his head's on fire more than? I mean, that guy. Uh, there like, might be, but he ooh. looks like he runs with his head on fire gosh. more than anybody. Yeah. yeah. I think it's just the way he stomps. He does, man. He looks like he's angry. He does. He's, he's got something to prove. You, know? you ever see his backstory? Yeah, it's pretty sad. All right. Don't want to go down that road. Um, so, Mahomes, Allen, QB 1 and 2, probably going into fantasy next year. Where do we want or where do we rank Rasheed Rice? Obviously, well, not a top three I'm or anything. I'm not putting him anywhere on there. Um, uh, Rasheed Rice, so, no, no, here's the thing is it depends on a couple of factors. First off, the Chiefs have some money this offseason. Will they go after a wide receiver? There are quite a few that are going to be available. I don't so, want you to reason things right now. I want you to give me a hot answer and then reason after. Can you do that? Okay, if we're going to do it right now, as yeah. roster stands, yes. he's a top 25 wide receiver. Okay, I like that. Yeah. There you go. All right, now give me the reasoning. Because we, we've we only seen a very small sample size of this, and I think there are enough elite receivers you put ahead of him, where even if Rasheed Rice is the number one target for Mahomes, the fact is there he is not an elite guy who can take the load the way Tyreek Hill did. And we the want way someone like Justin Jefferson you know, is able to do. Jamar Chase. you know. So uh, <laughs> for right now, as things stand, Rasheed Rice is a top 25 receiver. For so we're looking for load takers. We're looking for load takers, yes. Rocky Noni? No. <laughs> he is I. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I actually kind of agree a lot with what you said. I do like him, but I, kind of. I do too. Yeah. I almost wonder, though, how much of that was need based because he was throwing to a pile of shit. Yeah. Besides him. Like, Tony is Tony. And <laughs> let me tell you what, that guy, I don't I'm care very, how I'm much. I'm very of familiar a joy- with Tony. Yeah, I don't care. How much of a joystick you are when you got the ball? You got to so, get it first. It's so, amazing. Uh, Rocky and I are in a league we call the Dejan League. Yeah. And right before the Chiefs and Lions kicked off in the first game of the season, I was offered Puka Nakua for Kadarius Tony, and uh, I was like, "Well, this is a trade I think I'm going to take." And who traded you, to Tony? It. I didn't get to it in time because the game started, and I was like, "Well, shit, I can get it." Okay, after this weekend, then nope. I had the opportunity. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, and who yeah. traded you, Tony? Uh, but you also trade me Anthony Richardson, two first round picks, Jalen Warren for Trevor Lawrence. Mm. Uh, Yikes! I don't think that's true. That's true. We feel that true. Towards. Yeah, I don't think that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. I don't think good. that's true. <laughs> um, when did he true. sign this? So Mark sending me pictures of him and Snell as we speak. Damn, they can't move on from. Di- is this? No, this is Diggs last year. Stefan Diggs, no. Oh, no, he just re-signed them. Yeah, he's got a couple years left. They're tied into him. I'm looking at Sport Track right now. Um, Sport Track. Sport Track. You never get on Sport Track? No, it's called Sport Track, but it's all good. It's close enough. Yeah, anything else from this game? I mean, I, like I said, big on James Cook next year. Um, I do like I, I like Kincaid a lot very too. Cold. Kincaid uh, is great, and uh, we also in that same league. I was laughed at for drafting him. Um, you were laughed at by a pick. couple guys, but most uh, of like, m- most of the league did, and uh, most of the intelligent people did not. Well, that's why our commissioner is not intelligent. Um, oh, oh, oh. So uh, yeah, he ended up. I said he was going to be number two in receiving on the Bills, and lo and behold, he was. Um, so don't be Cade if you are in a redraft league or if someone undervalues him in your dynasty league, go get him. I like Kincaid a lot coming to the season. I was worried about the Knox thing and how much that was just going to be yeah, like. Yeah, I mean, once Knox got hurt, Kincaid really took over. He never gave back control of that position. Yeah. My other guy, though, McBride, I think those two are probably, mm, I don't know, that's a little bit. I mean, there's maybe a lot top of six, top seven tight ends. I would put next year. top five. I put them both top five, actually. Yeah. Okay, we'll so, in a minute. yeah, I mean, the problem I think right now with tight end is there's actually, we've never had bet, like, 
there's not been a deeper tight end group in a long time. Mm. I think you got Laporta, you got Kincaid, looks fantastic. You've got some up and covers and the joke who finally played up to his yeah, contract. You still got Hawkinson, you still got Kelsey. Yeah, you got TJ. Yeah, you got Pitts. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, everybody it's a loves. Deep group for the first time in years. All right. I, I think the other thing, too, is for a long time, for the last decade or so, we had like two or three guys who are really headlining the group. Yeah. Um, whether that's Gronk, whether that's Jimmy Graham, whether that is Zach Ertz, those guys kind of, oh, by the way, Zach Ertz signed with the Lions. So Practice squad, uh, right? They're going to activate him, They're going to activate though. him for yeah. the NFC Championship, so Zach Ertz will be playing. He worked very hard to get there this week um, with that team. I like that, actually. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but we've always had those kind of guys, but now it's kind of more of a, of a cluster of guys because Kelsey's not what he was. No. Um, Kelsey... He, he may looks, not, he may retire. He looks old. Yeah, he looks old. And with his brother retiring, um, which I, isn't and confirmed. They, and they got the and they got the Boy, podcast yeah. going. But he looked good. Let me tell you what, his brother, I did love that man seeing him. Uh, that was a good out time there with the Bills mafia. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. it was fantastic. Uh, do you want you want some some? Uh, you some want to do news? the breaking news now? Yeah, you, uh, some news as as we transition here. Okay. Um, involving uh, a top quarterback, an open head coaching position, a top um, quarterback end, and the reigning national champions in college football. Okay. Uh, it appears Jim Harbaugh is leaving Michigan to go to the L.A. Chargers. Oh, now, that's what I thought was going to happen. Now, by the time you're actually listening to this, you're like, yeah, old news. But uh, for us recording here Tuesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern time, uh, this is news. I mean, he to has to because that's what I was hearing. about to get the death penalty. I mean, yeah, the cheating is it's deep and substantiated. There's no way around it. And I, he had to leave. He yeah. had to pull Pete Carroll. Yep. He had to get out of town. I don't, I don't, let's not, we're not doing that, okay? This is not Ohio State Buckeyes it's, podcast. It has nothing to do with the Buckeyes. No, no, it's, you didn't have to lay it on so heavy you, you with che- the, you cheat, you everybody cheats. No, not, somebody just Everybody snitched. cheats, but the Houston somebody Astros just, cheated in a way that, and that's what. They weren't banging on trash cans, Rocky. The, the. Michigan. Michigan? They yeah, were. they were banging on trash cans. Michigan was buying tickets, sitting on the sideline and reporting. <laughs> anyway, Phil, take over this podcast. Again. Okay, Fine. here we go. Yeah, he's about to start crying. Um, yeah, so let's talk about next week's matchups, right? Let's just make some picks. Yeah. I mean, big games. KC and Baltimore. Let's just go. What are do you, we what going you got? straight? Or are we going points? I always go straight. Okay. Uh, well, you asked. Confirmed. I have just answered. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to pick, uh, I'll start with the Lions 49 I definitely said. <laughs> he said Casey Baltimore. Let's let, let, let the man lead. I am going to pick Baltimore. Um, I agree with you in that Mahomes is Mahomes. But I he is. just seen too much of Baltimore this year. Yeah. Watched them, um, of course, watched quite a few games, but very close. Both of the Browns games, one they destroyed us, how does one it, we got lucky to win. How does it happen? No, I want, this is what I want to know. How does it happen? Okay. How do they beat them? How does it? So the, my, my only fear about uh, Baltimore is I know you guys like their receivers more than I do. I don't know anything. You guys? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thinking. Why? Yeah. I, so, but I think Lamar is too much of a dual threat. I think if they're able to stop the receivers, Baltimore still knows how to design a run, and mm-hmm. I think that Lamar takes it over on the ground if he has to, and they win. Okay, I think I'm going to take KC, and I think Baltimore is a better overall team, but I feel like they have to win this game by a lot or they're going to lose it. And I think if it's close, I think the Chiefs find a way to win it because as good as a coach as Harbaugh is, I think Andy Reid is still a better one. Six straight AS. Patrick Mahomes is still man. a better quarterback, and I still I think a close one they win. If they could get up early, get on top of them, on have them on the road, I think they win the game. So I, I don't think that's going to happen. I, take I think the final score is going to indicate the game was closer than it actually was. I think Baltimore is going to win kind of going away. Mm-hmm. Part of this is for me is that Josh Allen against what has been a very good Kansas City defense. This past week ran for 12 times, 72 yards, two touchdowns. Sure. Lamar is a better runner than Josh Allen is. He is more gifted. He is, he is more gifted. He is much shiftier. Mm-hmm. Allen is a freight train. He yeah. will run at you, and, and he's not going to try to avoid contact. Lamar can avoid contact That's true. as well as anybody in the league. The, and he's not the only one that runs on this team. They have Dalvin Cook now. 
Like yeah. Dalvin Cook looked, he only had a few carries, but they were really effective carries against yeah, a pretty well, good Houston defense. It was an it was underappreciated carry. move, I think. Uh, right yeah, 100%. There. Well, and the thing I think that. Uh, I think, I think his up, line, though, was like eight carries for 29 yards yeah. and one of them was 23. Here's the other thing so. is, that, is that if you are Kansas City and you don't have more than one dependable receiver and you're playing this Baltimore defense, you are done. I don't care that you're Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. You're going to have a really hard time. Pacheco's not going to be able to run against them the Are way he did. Are you forgetting about a, a guy named Noah Gray? Okay, shut up. Uh, <laughs> Pacheco's I, not going to be able to have the same effective running yeah. against the Buffalo or against uh, Ravens defense as he did against a injured Buffalo defense. I really think Baltimore at some point will be up three touchdowns in this game. I think Kansas City gets a couple of late touchdowns to make it look closer than it actually is. Okay. Baltimore in the Super Bowl. Well, what I think that. What we saw with KC last week is that they actually were giving up a lot of underneath route. Allen just wasn't seeing it. And I think Lamar, honestly, is well, a little I mean, bit better I, at that. I got to stop you there because I know we made a big thing about the Allen, the underneath routes with Allen, but that really didn't happen to like the last two drives of the game. The rest of the game, he was being methodical. He was dumping it underneath, and that's how they were kind of right winning the game. That's fair. He that's just fair. got like on the uh, big for him. What he, he reverted to his nature when it was late in the game. He felt like, But to be fair, that pass, he that's a touchdown if he doesn't get hit at the last second throwing it to the end zone where fair. he passed up Diggs on that third and nine, which I was screaming at the TV. Like, I don't understand how he passed him up, but it should have been I mean, a touchdown. Diggs did drop two or three, so maybe he was like, I'm not throwing it at that guy again. Could be. You know, he was running free. Head, seriously. All right, so we got two Baltimores in the KC. Okay, so let's go to the NFC side. We got the Lions. We got the 49ers. We get the Cinderella. Well, not the Cinderella story, but do we get the feel-good story or do we get the, the big red machine that finally cashes in on these five years of being dominant? Look, Jordan Love had two picks in this game against San Francisco, but they are both plays that if Jordan Love looks at it, he will take back. Mm -hmm. Jared Goff's not a guy who turns over the ball. Uh, I think the Lions defense is a lot better than people give them credit for. Mm -hmm. And I think Brock Purdy can be rattled as we've seen the last couple of weeks. I think the Detroit Lions going to Super Bowl? are going to the Super Bowl. The Ooh. weird thing is, and, I, and I, I'll have to agree, there's a little bit of a caveat. I think Debo, if he is unlikely to play, seals that fate. Because I, I they just the 49ers don't seem to move as well when they don't have Ayuk and Debo both on the field. Um, well, he's their he's their queen piece. Yeah, you know he's the piece they move around to manipulate. He's the guy and see that what somebody always has to be spying. Yeah. Five you points know? for chess reference. Yeah. So I will say yeah. that I I would not have said this three weeks ago, but I believe the Lions are going to come out victorious in this game. I agree. I think the Debo thing. I was a little bit more up in air, but without Debo, if he doesn't play, yes. I do think it makes it a little bit more. Feasible because they just haven't looked as sharp the last. Uh, I mean, even towards the end of the season, they looked them, but they didn't look sharp last week. We've seen Purdy rattled. I do think there's something going on with that defense. They were bad in the middle of the season. I do think well, they're didn't getting. They like struggle yeah. against. They had a three-game losing streak. <laughs> yeah, that they included looked... losses to Cleveland. Um, yeah, don't wink like that. That's just weird. They were uh, they, they were letting teams into the game, like in the second half, letting teams back in the game. Yeah, yeah. they lost to. Did, Which they did, did with the Bucks. to be fair. They did let the Bucks back in that game as well. But I do think they're tying up. I think uh, Aiden O'Connell has looked uh, – not Aiden O'Connell. Aiden Hutchinson has looked uh, pretty good. And, yeah, I, I think the San, San Francisco looks just mortal enough that without Debo they can lose this game. Do you remember that if San Francisco does advance, we already saw this matchup Christmas night, 33-19, the Ravens won yeah. in San Francisco. The Ravens beat every good team this year. Uh, the Ravens' losses are few and far between. Uh, let's see who they lost to because I forgot. Uh, so they lost to Indianapolis. Yeah, which was a fluky Week two, game. right? It was week two or week, week one? Week three. Yeah. They lost to Pittsburgh. Yeah, play down to your competition a and little bit. And not trying to make anybody have a big head here. They lost to Cleveland. Well, Cleveland Which, has uh, their Deshaun number typically, Watson's right? Deshaun Watson's best game. Yeah, yeah that was, was a good game. Yeah, yeah. It, was, yeah. it was Baker's uh, <laughs> sad replacement's best game. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I, think, I think the Ravens are, if I'm looking across this, I think they're the most complete team both sides of the ball. Um, but... You know, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Maybe KC is going to, I mean, you going to land I, that plane or? Hey. I like have a little drone just hey, fluttering in here in the corner. <laughs> it's like getting, a, it's getting us to our destination yeah, right now. Okay, Rocky? That was a bad reference. Just take the ride. 
<laughs> yeah, I don't think the. I'm not saying. I just think it has to go a certain way for the Ravens to win. I just if if you're a Ravens fan, you want this game to kind of be in control of your team early, where you can run the ball and play your game and not be forced to go back and forth with well, you're right, Mahomes. What you're saying, no, is I think they can go. I think they can go back and forth with them. I don't know if Lamar could go back and forth with Mahomes. But what, game. You're, but what you're saying is if Baltimore gets up by two, you know, uh, ten, two, ten, yeah. ten points or something can. like that, I think I feel a lot better. I mean, obviously anybody would, but I feel like they could salt the game away playing their style of ball. If you're in a, fire, a shootout, kind of like sort of what you had with him and Allen, I feel less. I feel like as great as Lamar is in that type of game where he's forced to push the ball down the field, I do worry about a mistake. Makes so, sense. That's my only. My two sets. All right. So do we want to do this thing here with the positionals? I mean, we, we will have, have to be pretty quick. We've, we've been like 40, 45 minutes so far. So if we can run through it quick, we can do it. Okay. Well, and I think we may agree on some of these. So do you guys want to take, if we're talking about way too early. Just top right, at top each position. positional pick. Okay. Uh, I'll start off. I'll give you the quarterbacks right now. It's Lamar. It's Josh Allen. It's Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> and it's Joe Burrow. Revenge tour. Yeah. What's my top four? Okay, so I'll go top four. I'll use the same guys. I'll rearrange them. I'm going to go Allen again just because coming to the season, I think it's going to be the same thing next year. They just asked him to do so much, and he's going to produce. He's going to – he plays hero ball for a reason, and that just means fantasy points for your team. Um, I go Mahomes second. I think he bounces back. It was a little bit of a letdown this year to, uh, according to his standards. Um, Jackson would be third for me. Like Jackson, but he seems to fluctuate with his fantasy years. Like he had a great year this year, last year not as hot. And then Burrow coming off the injury, you know, it's really just off a namesake that he's at four for me. Where do we have Hurts? That's that's. I'm, the I'm actually having Hurts at six. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have Herbert uh, in between there. Hmm. Reinvigorated, new coach. Yep. New coach, new system, yep. new mindset. Decent minds. receivers. Yeah. Well, if they um, can stay healthy, yeah. So I actually have um, Herbert, as we like to say, Air Bear. Um, yeah. He's I actually, not Air Bear right now. He's, yeah, he's Herbert. He's Herbert. Um, <laughs> I, I would actually have him as, as fourth in mine. Mm -hmm. um, I like Lamar Jackson higher than you do. Mm -hmm. I like Josh Allen next. Um, I do like Mahomes. I do think that they're going to have to what are the, what, what, what? Do you know the order? What is the order? For what? What are you saying? Are you saying this backwards? He's saying it backwards because he wants to be dramatic about okay, it. Okay, yeah. And then you're not saying the numbers either, right? I'm saying Jackson's number okay. one. Okay. okay. Yeah. Number okay, two. I got you. Number two would be Allen. Gotcha. Number three you went, would, I just want to point this out. You went from number one, number two, <laughs> number three, number four. It's just weird how your hands are. Yeah, that's why you're confusing good. me. <laughs> it's all good. That's fair. I would go Mahomes uh, third. I okay. would go Herbert four. And then at, at five, I'm kind of a little bit like I love Burroughs. He just yeah, has no ass. He loves Burroughs. He's a, <laughs> he just hasn't been healthy. What and animal he Burroughs? He, no he's ass. a gopher. He There's loves a Burroughs. Of, <laughs> a lot, lot of animals, Burroughs. Burrow, Burroughs. Okay. Anyways, um, he just hasn't been healthy. Like he, he worries me. Yeah, that's true. No. So, and I think his, uh, you know, Edmonds. Was it Edmonds that took over for, or no, Brown? I think Brown proved Jake that he's Browning. A, Jake he Browning. He's a I'm here to correct names. Don't worry. I think he's he's the number one. He's going in as a camp. He's going battle. in. He's a camp, camp battle. battle. All right, <laughs> running backs go. So I got the Caffrey number one. Wow. Uh, Bold. Look, I like Brees. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> big big shocker. I like Brees Hall a lot, but he's number three for me. Smack for that in the middle. This depends a lot on coaching and who they get as the quarterback. I I really think Bijan Robinson should be the number two running back in fantasy. He's just too good. Um, and there's no reason that if they utilize him properly, he is not. He could be the number one guy. Um, so I have him number two. Brees Hall number three. And uh, look, I think I reinvigorated Jonathan Taylor, sneaking back into the top four. I can see that. You know, he did. He did look really good toward the end of the season. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would go CMC. I've got Brees. Um, I've got. Robinson, and the reason I have Robinson is who no is one, their coach? No one calls him Robinson. I do. Who? Bijan. Bijan. Yeah, he, that's what he. That's his. Robinson. That's him. Um, <laughs> Robinson. <laughs> who? Who? Who is their coach? Nobody right now. And if it's Vilichek, which I kind of think it low key might be. Low key. I'm worried about 
Has he ever had a lead back? He's freaking. Shout out Tom uh, it's not. It's not really low key though. You know, it's kind of everybody saying it's going to be. And then I've got. Uh, I I like what you're saying about Jonathan Taylor. I'll be honest. I kind of didn't think of him, but I think Gibbs is going to continue to develop. So the thing with me and Gibbs, at least for this next season, they still have Dave Montgomery under contract. Yeah. Montgomery. Man. So so it's kind of tough buzzer, for me to put yeah. either one of those guys. He, in the top he's the thunder until, to the lightning yeah. there. Yeah. Um. All right. I will also go McCaffrey because I think you just have to at this point. Shocker, shocker, and I did shocker. not make notes, so I'm going to free. I do like Hall. I'll 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 put a stamp on Hall at two. I do like. I really like B. John. I thought B. John was going to be top five this year. I, he's got to get we the all. rock. Um, Everybody but Arthur. And let's go. <laughs> let's go Rashad White for another with the receiving. He, where where did he finish this year, Rocky? You, you know my feelings. Fighting. I don't on care Rashad about him being a runner. It's just fantasy. When they Where did he finish Fat this year? Lenny, <laughs> and okay. they make him the runner. Rashad White. Rashad and, White's a great receiver. If you want to put him as like your slot receiver, yeah, go back and watch the Lions game. He actually made quite a few good runs. Not, against yeah, that he looked. Line. He the vision. He looked, he looked like he had some damn vision to me. Every once right. in a while, a blind squirrel finds a nut. So anyway, Rashad White, you know and Browns then fan. and then I will throw in instead of Taylor. I do like James Cook to be my t- my fifth back. They have to go into this offseason. Hopefully, they get a new coach, new head coach. But they have to make him the. He, you don't think so? No, that McDermott's back. Damn. Anyway, so not, I'm not saying that as like breaking news or anything. Yeah. I'm saying I do not see a scenario you don't see which it they let him go at this point. Yeah, no, I I know you know them up there in Buffalo. Yeah, yeah, um, best friends. Yeah, um, shout out to the to whatever their. Area I code think is. they have to go into this off season or next season, make him the focal point of the offense, make it less about Allen. I don't think they will. That's why I have Allen number one. But they should kind of base what they do around him and give Allen more of that play action shot thing and then let him create off script Yeah, because he's talented enough to do it. I mean, I don't know why they're not doing it already. All right. Wide receivers. This is a tough one for me. I'm going to say this one was actually pretty easy for me. Really? Yeah. Okay. So, so just based off the way he finished out the season, very strong. I'm not a Cowboys fan by any means. No. I think CD lamb comes in at number one. Okay. Um, Justin Jefferson would have been number one. If we knew for a fact, Kirk cousins was back a healthy Kirk cousins, mm-hmm. but we all know who the quarterback is there. So at this point, I can't really put Justin Jefferson as well, as high as I'd like to. Um, number two, because I do actually believe in Joe Burrow, is Jamar Chase. Uh, they're going to retain either T. Higgins or Tyler Boyd to take some pressure off of Chase. They're not going to bring back all three, but I think Jamar Chase goes off again. At number three, look, Tyree Kill, when he is on, there really is nobody better fantasy receiver than him. If that Dolphins office is clicking, Tyree Kill, my God. Uh, and at number four, this is where I put Justin Jefferson, just because of the uncertainty. I think if there was a certainty of a, of a good, um, even above average quarterback playing for the Vikings, I think he is number one. But because of that uncertainty right now, he's at number four for me. Okay. okay. I'll go next. I got it set up. I got CD, Tyreek Hill, JJ, and then Chase. I don't not believe in Chase, and I do think Burrow is a great quarterback. I agree with you. They're going to lose one of their receivers, which I think will make Chase definitely in the top four. Okay, so hate to do it. I'm going Hill again. I'm going Hill number one Mari again. Cooper? I agree with no, you. No, Hill. I'll I go guess. Lamb two, Justin Jefferson, and I'm going St. Brown four. Um, I like, I yeah. like St. Brown. I like St. Brown. Same reason I like Cooper. Same reason I like Evans. He's just consistent. He's always – he's not hurt. And he, he just continues to put up like a solid stat line. Like a lot of these, there's a, f- a few, the, most of these guys we just named had higher point totals throughout the season. But I would say week to week, outside from Lamb in the second half of the season, I feel like he's probably the, the most consistent, consistent of all of them. Yeah. Instead of getting, you know, your 45 point game from Hill and then your 12 point, I feel like Ra- Amon Ra is always around 19 to 25. And you could just, Put it in the bank, yeah. and, and I like guys like that. You forget him. He's, it's in, uh-huh. he's in your line, lineup. All right, kickers. Where are we? Top four kickers. kickers. What yeah. the hell are you talking about? Hey, Dan? you know what? Underrated. Underrated. Kickers and defense, if you have them in your league, are underrated. All of my leagues will have them next year. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you. We're taking They back are over. underrated. Taking I had the F the, back over. In my Our league. league. We're taking the back over this well, year. Well, you guys should stop letting people vote on shit, you know? <laughs> yeah, well, we're, don't make worry. the rules. Don't worry. We're going to do the league. The, the, I don't, like, the king I, of the rock are coming back. Me and Josh only like to bother you guys because oh, yeah. you let people vote on it. 
I wouldn't care if you made the rules and we just play. Like I don't. But you want to make it a thing, so it's like fun to fuck oh, with you worry. guys. The king and the rock are about to. The king and the so rock. Regulate. Uh, rock and the king. Rain down on everybody. Regulate. That's okay. fun. Tight right. ends. Um, this is tough for me. This again. Another this one. one. This one. So I think there's gonna be a surprise in here. Hmm. First off, I want to say Travis Kelsey. I uh, I love Travis Kelsey. He has been great to my fantasy team for the last three years in the league we're in together. Um, he is not in my top four. Oh no! Just because I don't know if he can continue to do it. This is a lot of is younger guys. I would put him in five or six. Um, so number one for me is a guy who's still playing, and uh, he's I hope a guy. So. He's a, <laughs> oh, okay. still playing in, in this season. <laughs> gotcha. Um, and he's a guy who I think can really turn the tide for the Detroit Lions. Sam Laporte is my number one tight end. Yeah. Um, heading into next season, I can see that. Uh, number two is uh, is a guy who's been around, and uh, Rocky decided to talk you know shit about him a few minutes ago. But George Kittle is still a reliable target in San Francisco. I think he is number two for me. Um, number three, Rocky will appreciate this one a little more. Uh, it's it's it, this guy came on. I don't know if it's going to be. He's going to fall back down to earth because Flacco's not the quarterback there anymore. Mm -hmm. um, he really, really saw an increase in target snaps efficiency with Flacco in there. We'll see what happens. But for right now, David Njoku is my number three. Number four is also the guy who had the fourth most catches in the NFL this season. And he's a guy that I think people forget about. No, he's going to be my number two. He's your number two. I think so. Because this guy uh, plays in a city that no one cares about yeah. except for the NFL team that plays there. Yeah, and, no, and very city. few people actually care about the NFL team that plays Bad there. That stadium, and, too. And uh, it's a terrible stadium, but they're going to renovate it soon. Yeah. Uh, Evan Ingram is my number four. Yeah. Uh, he had 114 catches, was fourth most in the NFL. I will go on to say he was the best receiver on that team at the end of the season. He was. Yeah. He was. So those are my top four. I think Kelsey comes at number five for me. I have Mark Andrews at six. I think Andrews would be a little higher if we were a little more consistent with the health thing. Um, but he has had issues with that the last couple of years, so he's number six for me. And then I have uh, Trey McBride. Well, you're going to seven, uh, huh? I'm just going to do this next stuff. And crazy. Dalton Kincaid, number, number eight. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Rock. So I've got a little bit different. I'm a little bit more uh, heavy on the younger guys. And Joku? I've got Laporta, Kincaid, <laughs> Njoku. And then I'm kind of torn between Andrews or Kelsey. Like, which one? I don't know. Is mm -hmm. it likely? You know, I don't know. But I, I feel very secure with those first three for sure. Okay. I'm going Laporta number one. I'm going Engram two. I'm going McBride three. And guess what? I'm going Pitts four. I think All they're right. going to hire Belichick, and I think – yeah, they're gonna make him. Likes to to they're gonna that. make him kind of the yeah. focal point of that You're offense. Fan. Big tight end fan. Yeah. I mean, think about it, Aaron Hernandez. And he likes dogs. Come on, man, that's old, right? Come on, everybody fights dogs here and there. All right, well, guys, that was the show. Uh, since we forgot to do it earlier, I will mention if you do like to play fantasy and you do like to bet a little bit, and you, especially if you're in a state that doesn't allow those things. Go to Thrive. New users get up to $250 instant deposit match, 100% on their first deposit. Why is that written like that? Promo code GUYS. And who, who wrote this? <laughs> Did you write that? It got somehow erased, and so I was trying can to we do you, you may try this. You may try this. You can may do give it, this a shot. Yeah, I want, I'll try it. Read it. Yeah, I, I can Don't work. reword it. I can just so, read so it. So new users get the 250 instant 100% deposit. Just make any goddamn sense. <laughs> yeah. uh, I didn't write that. So part. new users get up to 250 instant deposit <laughs> match on their first match yes. on their first bet using promo code guys and clicking the link guys in the bio. Whoever wrote this sucks. Uh, the QR is on the screen. Or you just get. Uh, pop, pop lat? What the fuck is that? I didn't All right, like that. so thank you, right? I'm not, I know how to read. All right, Thanks. we'll try one more time. Poop slashes. New users get up to $250 instant deposit match on their first deposit using promo code guys okay. on and clicking the link in the bio QR code on screen. Our users get prop slashes, free fantasy squares, and game, game time decision contest, etc. Yeah, go there. Actually, it's really like yeah. intuitive. If you're not familiar with betting or, you know, having a little bit of action on the games, it's a good way to make, get, get your beak wet. It's, it's, it's very good hand, uh, very good uh, writing, terrible handwriting. It's a very good site. It was terribly written down by whoever yeah. wrote Purple is, is mine. The blue was already up. Uh, okay. All right. So well, I that's. Who I think it's more of a green. Um, well, and yeah, that, and if you need blue. some, you need some advice. It's more of a greenish blue. It's more of a greenish blue. Yeah. And if you need some advice, you need help with your lineups. 
We Talk have our community over there on Chalkboard, 24-7 free fantasy advice from yours truly. Links in the bio. QR code is going to be right here on the screen as well. We have our servers, our discords there. We got Rocky's picks. I mean, Rocky starts sit. Um, Mark starts sits. Rocky's chief seats. My picks. Zach just likes to, you know, talk to people on there. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's looking for friends. He's looking for friends. We yeah. do, uh, we do roster ratings, trade grades, stuff like that. It's a really cool community. We have 300, about 300, right? 300 yeah. people in there now. Yep. And, and if you're not on. getting one of us, you're going back and forth with other community members who are giving you answers. You, you know, bouncing ideas off. It's a real, it's a real nice thing. So go there, sign up using our link, put a little money in our pocket. Maybe we'll get some better mics and cameras, and this whole thing will look a little bit better. Maybe some facelifts. You know, yeah, I can facelifts. Use one. You could definitely use one. Well. Yeah, yeah. I can, no, I'm, I'm there. And that's the show, guys. Check out Guys on Pod on all your socials. Hit the link. Uh, go to our Guys on Draft. Watch that show. Like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And don't be afraid to comment and call us stupid because we pretty much call Mark stupid. This idiot's talking about football. He yeah. He's not even gonna see it. He, I mean, let's be real. He doesn't watch it when he's yeah, not on the show. Peace. <laughs>